month five, we got into survival strategies and the wild food, living in the Arctic, living in the tropics, living where you're actually living, learning about survival in the wild. Um, there are some huge primitive skills festivals going on in North America. There's one going on in, I think it's in Maine. They get a million people a, 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 a season. Or like, you know, when they do their long, I think it goes on for five days. They get a million people in there. That's how big this has become. Start looking at that stuff. You know, how do you, how do you start a fire with no tools? Being in, in New Zealand and Australia, interestingly, the same exact types of conchs, like Fomis fomentarius in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Southern, they use a similar type of mushroom to control fire. If you know my whole story about that, I did talk about it in that particular call about how you could take a chaga mushroom and once you ignite it, it's really hot and it doesn't go out easily. It's like a charcoal that keeps burning. You could take another mushroom, namely Fomis fomentarius. You core a hole in that one. You throw the ember in there. You can walk around with that ember still lit inside that other mushroom. It won't burn it. And that is the same exact system in the northern region, the climbs of the world is also used in the southern that was fascinating to to get into that. Very very interesting, and um, being at you know being in also again in New Zealand, that's exactly what the Maoris had used as well. Um, this is something too that was super cool, you know, in terms of survival. The Maoris had you know they they had a ship. This is why I love what they've done on this island over here in Hawaii. They put over at the top of the mountain over here ten redwood trees from California. Now, why is that important? Well, just let's just imagine a time 500 years in the future where the system has collapsed. I, I doubt highly, based on history, that civilization goes on forever. And I doubt highly that our civilization will go on forever. And I suspect very strongly that this group, what we're, what we're you know, dealing with in our little group here, we are the core of the next civilization to come. Right. We have our heads on straight. We have we have a complete and holistic view of reality and of healing and of living. We understand the nature of what's coming due to the chemical assault. And that is an, an epidemic of infertility. We know that's coming. It's inevitable. It's already here. It's getting worse. So we can see what's going to happen is, is the infertility epidemic is going to cause the population to collapse and cause a population inversion like what's happening in Japan. And if you remember in the 1980s, Japan was a superpower. Now we don't ever hear about Japan because they had a population inversion. Anyway, getting back to this thing that it, as, as we get into the future and civilization goes down, if I've got trees over here like redwood trees, like the Maoris had coyote trees, those they can push the whole tree over when the tree dies, get the whole tree over, carve a boat out of one single tree. That's what they did. That turned the Maoris into the greatest navigators in the world. Talk about survival strategies. Those people sailed all over the world. They sailed to Madagascar. We know that. They sailed to Peru. We also know that. They sailed to Easter Island. We know that. They sailed to Kauai and Big Island, Hawaii and Oahu. That We also know that. You think that it just stopped there? I doubt it. I think the reason why they tattooed their face is because they were – that's how they maintain that community cohesion amongst their tribes sailing all over the world in these giant boats made out of one tree. And every now and then they'd get a real one together. They take two trees, boom, pull them together and do like an outrigger style and sail across the oceans in those gi two giant trees. That's it. There's no way there's going to be a leak. You know, that's the kind of thinking when I think of survival skills, I think about that kind of stuff. You know, you may go, you know, for me, I, it, it's going to mean I got to plant now because you may be gone in 70 years, um, but someone's going to be eating from those fruit trees that you planted or nut trees that you planted or the medicinal trees that you planted or something. You got to think like that or accumulate treasure to give to your kids and grandkids so they have gold and silver. You know, the, this, this thing that we hear a lot of like, you know, what are you going to do with gold? Eat it? Yes, we're going to eat it. Yes, here it is. I'm going to eat it right now right? This is made out of pure gold metal and you can eat gold. Here it is. So if worse comes to worse, I'm going to eat the gold. That's going to be good. Is that the best ever? Are you guys having a good time? <laughs> you can eat gold. They didn't know that. Or maybe they, I don't, maybe they do know that they just lied to us. Who knows? Um, I got a saguaro cactus. So my grandkids get the fruit. Good job.